guys, it's Doof here. So last week I went hiking at Swallow Falls State Park in Oakland, Maryland. And we got to the park with our dog in the car because I read online that dogs were allowed on the trail we wanted to hike. However, when we got there, we saw signs posted that said, no dogs allowed from Memorial Day to Labor Day. So we got out of the car and just kind of stood in the parking lot confused for a little bit trying to figure out if we should just try to hike the trail with the dog until we get yelled at or if we should just pack the dog back up and head back to the cabin. Uh, but a ranger came out to the car and talked to us and he was very polite and he gave us a separate trail that we could do that was just outside of the park. Uh, it, it had views of the same waterfall just from the other side of the river. So he was really, really nice and I'm glad that he gave us that information because we had a great hike and here I made it to Muddy Creek Falls. I got lots of photos and this is what I decided to paint back in the cabin. So thanks for watching the hike. Now you get to watch the painting. This is an acrylic painting, so I have my acrylic paints on my palette there. Uh, the colors that I used for this painting video are in the description. Just click that acrylic painting materials and it'll take you to my Amazon Associates account where you can grab all those colors if you're going to recreate this painting. So to get started, I just used some of my brown and dipped it in water so it was nice and thin and sketched out the concept for this painting. And in the upper right corner you can see my reference photograph that I looked at while I was creating this painting. I did change some things from the reference photograph. I changed the color of the sky to make that a little more exciting and colorful and I removed that tree limb that's closer to the foreground in the upper left because I thought it was a little distracting and I wanted to have the sun starting to set in that part of the sky, so I did remove that tree up there. I also made the waterfall in the background a little bit more clear, and I moved the tree line a little bit farther to the right so we could see more of that big waterfall in the far background. And now I'm finishing up my sketch. Some important parts of this sketch to think about when you are recreating this painting is that waterfall in the far background is a very big waterfall. It's about 50 to 60 feet I believe, but it is, appears much smaller than the waterfalls closer to us because it's so much farther away. So even though you might know that that's a big waterfall, you need to sketch it out just as it appears. Super tiny, about half the size, even a third of the size of those waterfalls that are closer to us in the foreground. You'll also notice that those trees go down in a diagonal as this, the trees are getting farther away from us and there's that clearing there where the river is so we have the V line for the trees and the trees are getting bigger as they're getting closer to us so that's why we have that V shape in the sky. Here you got to see me start with my color blending of the acrylic paint for the sky. I used yellow mixed with orange and white and I used a medium-sized flat tip brush and made back and forth brush strokes blending those colors into one another to have a nice smooth transition of color in the sky. I wanted to have more of the yellow colors in the central portion of the sky and more of the reds, oranges, and purples on the outer edges of the sky. When a sun is setting, the outer edges of the sky that we see in a frame are typically cooler as you're getting farther away from the sun, cooler colors are seen and right around the sun we have those bright whites and yellows and oranges. So for now I just painted that base color and then I'm going to go back in after this dries and add my sunset or the sun that is setting. <laughs> While I am waiting on that sky to finish drying to add my sun, I'm starting to add the tree line. 
So I'm just using a base color here. It's not quite the darkest shadow and not quite the brightest highlight. Just a neutral green shade that matches a similar hue to the trees in my reference image. And I'm just taking a flat tip brush, making flat lines to just give the texture of branches and as I move farther down and we don't see individual branches in the sky, I'm just quickly applying some paint with blobs of paint, adding a little bit more blues and browns as I'm moving farther down into the part where the trees touch the earth. When you're painting your trees, a good tip is to start with the trees that are farther away from you and make your way forward. If you start to paint trees that are closer to you and then you have to work backwards, then you're just going to have to repaint over what you did because you were moving backwards and you have to move forwards again. So it makes sense to just start with the trees that are the farthest away and make your way forward. Another good tip for painting different types of trees is to paint your branches in all different directions. A lot of people will paint their tree limbs all going perfectly out parallel to each other, diagonally upwards from the tree or just like straight out to the side. But when you're looking at a tree, most of the time trees don't only have limbs sticking out on both sides. They have tree limbs sticking out on all sides in a circle around them. So some of those ones that are facing you are going to appear to be at a very steep angle or facing down even. And some of the ones behind you are going to just look more mushy and blob-like than a straight limb. So <laughs> do a little bit of variety with your limbs. Don't just make them all look like a perfect symmetrical tree because that's not what we see in nature. I'm starting to paint a base shade for my rocks that are along the right side of that waterfall in the uh, central part of the painting there. And I used a lighter shade for my base shade because that lighter shade appeared to be the dominant uh, shade in those rocks there. So I go back later when I add more detail and add all of those shadows, but for now I just went with a creamy color, which was a mix of some flesh tint, some yellow ochre, some white, possibly a hint of brown or black. And as I mentioned a little bit ago, I am starting to add a little bit of detail to these rocks, adding those shadows where the rock is wet close to the waterfall and the shadows in between each of the bedding layers of the rock. Over on the left side, I used a much darker shade for the base color of my rocks because these rocks were primarily in shadow. Here I'm going back and starting to add highlights on top of those rocks and add a little bit more detail to make these rocks recognizable and look a little closer to the reference image. Alright, now I'm working on the tree line that 
starts in the far distance on the left side of that back waterfall and makes its way up the left side. And those trees are actually the farthest behind any of the other trees. I could have started with those trees, but I didn't because there wasn't anything on the right side that was blocking them in front of them, so now I'm working on those trees on the left. So these trees, because they're the farthest in the back, they're going to be the lightest and the least saturated in color, and they're going to have the least amount of detail. We're not going to be able to see each individual branch and leaf coming off of those trees in the far background. They're going to be a little hazier, and as we get closer to the foreground, the trees are getting taller as they're getting closer to us, and we're starting to see individual branches. By this point in time, a good 20 to 30 minutes has passed and the acrylic paint that I started in the sky has dried. So now I can go back on top of that paint and add a layer of paint for my sun. I used a little bit of orange, a little bit of yellow, now I'm using some white. But I made that little glow around the sun with that orange-yellow color and now I'm just going back with some white and in the center of that circle. I'm throwing my white in and letting it just blend into those other colors to give a nice soft glowing sun look. And you may be wondering why I just used four different paintbrushes to work on that tiny little bit of the sun. And I was really only using one or two of those brushes to apply the paint. Those other two brushes that I was using were just brushes with no paint on them that I was trying to uh, blend and just kind of pick up the excess paint so it would give me a nice smooth transition. It's almost like a dry brushing technique where you have no paint on the brush and you want to just kind of smear the existing paint on the canvas out without it uh, getting too thick or having texture. You just want to kind of let it wither away and let your brush pick some of that paint right off. ready to paint the water. The water's fun to paint. We have a nice blend of colors for the water. Most of these colors are reflecting what we already painted. So we have green trees. Those green trees are reflecting their color onto the river there. So we have a mix of a greenish brown because the river base is brown from the sediment and then we have some rocks in there that also are kind of like a beige brown. So we have a little blend of reflective color and actual color of the base of the river. We also have some highlights from the sun, light hitting the river, and uh, some shadows where the rocks are reflecting and the, they're in shadow of the sun. So we have a nice good variety here to work with in the river. I started with my green brownish shades there and I'm just kind of using my medium-sized flat brush and making back and forth motions to blend everything together pretty smoothly. In some areas of the photograph where we have more light reflecting and the color of the water is a little bit less saturated, I'm trying to keep that in my painting. So I'm looking at my reference photo, seeing what sections of the river are a little darker, what sections are a little lighter, which sections are a little more green, which sections are a little more brown, and just transferring that over into my painting. While I'm working on these rocks, in the foreground they're going to be a beige gray shade there. Just doing a base color for all of those first. They're all going to have a small reflection on the water as well, which I'll get to a little farther down the road. <laughs> 
working on the waterfalls, I'm using a shade that is a mix of white, black, and that periwinkle blue. Never start a waterfall with pure white as your base color. You only want to use pure white where we have splashes of water that the sun is hitting to really show the depth of the water that's coming down the falls. So use a base color that has a little bit of shadow in it, sometimes some blue, sometimes some green, sometimes some brown, and you can add more shadows and highlights on the water where you see some rocks sticking through. You're going to add a little bit of darker brown and black, and then where you have those splashing bright water where the light's hitting it, that's where you're going to have white on your rapids. Here I'm working on adding bright oranges and reds on the borders of my tree line there where the sun is peeking through, that light is hitting. We have a little bit of warm color that is visible on the trees and even though that wasn't visible in my reference photograph, I changed my painting to be a little bit later in the day and have a little bit more sunset colors in the sky, so since that's where I'm painting my sky, I want to have those warm reds and oranges where the sun is peeking through those tree branches visible in the painting. So that's what I'm working on right now. Also starting to add more highlights on my trees and some shadows. Even though your trees in the reference image may appear to all be the exact same set of colors for highlights and shadows, you want to use a mix of different colors when you're painting your trees in your painting because you want each tree to stand out from one another and you want to give that sense of depth in the trees and the forest. So use some browns, use some reds and make some of your trees a little more brown, make some of your trees have a little bit more yellow in them. And that's how you're going to get those trees to all stand out from one another and not just look like one big fuzzball of a forest that's all the same color. At this point in the painting, everything is becoming very repetitive. I'm just adding more highlights and shadows for my detail and just building the contrast up, making things start to pop more. As I'm working more in the foreground, I'm going to build up that contrast even more. If you look at the rocks closest to us in the foreground, there's quite a contrast between shadow and the highlights on those rocks. And then the rocks farther out in the distance right in front of that waterfall don't have quite as much of a contrast. So that's something I'm keeping in mind while I'm working on this painting. And adding ripples in the water, adding more parts of the waterfall, more areas where the water's flowing on top of the rocks, more highlights in the trees, highlights on top of the rocks, working on my shadows around the rocks to make the rocks appear round. All kinds of stuff going on, but again, very repetitive. In general, I'm just adding shadow and highlight, shadow and highlight, and building up that contrast until I get this painting looking as realistic 
as I'd like and as detailed as I'd like. You don't have to go this detailed with your own painting. When you come to a point where you think your painting looks like it's done, then it's done. Because guess what? You're the artist and you get to say when your painting is done. <laughs> I personally like a lot of detail in my paintings, so I spend a lot of time boosting my contrast and adding smaller details, tending to go more towards the smaller brushes as I get farther into a painting. Now that I've added quite a bit of detail to my forest, I'm adding the vertical tree limbs that are coming up out of the ground in the forest. I didn't specifically put these tree limbs where I saw them in the reference image. I just put them in random spots that I thought would look realistic for my forest and give it more depth and show that not all of the trees are totally perfectly covered in leaves. We are going to see some tree limbs sticking out of there. And I started with a lighter gray shade for the tree limbs so they'd be nice and visible. And then I added a shadow on some of them because they're not all going to be perfectly visible to us. I also went back over and added some leaves in front of some of them because we're not going to see the full tree limb sticking up the entire way unless it was just a dead limb, which in some cases we do have. These are just things I think about when I'm painting my forests. So I don't want them to be perfect, I want them to look real. So have some dead trees sticking out here, have some brown leaves over there, have some branches sticking out this direction. Everything's a little bit crazy, but when you get a painting together as a whole, it works and it looks realistic. I was playing around with adding those trees in front of the waterfall to look more like the reference photo, but I did not like that. I wanted more of the waterfall to be visible, so I painted back over that with my waterfall gray color and continued to add a little bit more detail to the waterfall and the rocks, boosting the shadows and the highlights on those rocks yet again. And then, after that's done, I called it a painting. 